Yep, this is gonna be a good one. Not that Kaposa ever disappoints with these highlight clips, but this week in particular had some of my personal favorites from this past weekend, as well as some of the more bizarre moments in the world of MMA. And you know the drill. If you like these videos and want more insane regional indie MMA highlights, go give Kaposa a follow on Twitter at Grabaka underscore Hitman. What's going on, everyone? It's the casual Lawton Veerkant, and this is Kaposa's Corner. Kicking us off this week, we are going to Zhu Chang King in China for one fight. Here, we have a bantamweight fight that sees Liu Tian Long sitting at an 11 and 5 record, and his opponent, Liu Yang, who has an 8 and 3 record. We're just over the one minute mark in the first round, and brace yourself. <laughs> Holy left jab directly through the guard, which couldn't have been any more dead center, and one nasty head slam, and Yang is out cold. What a performance by Long as he secures this beautiful knockout in just over a minute into this fight and gains the win, improving his record to 12 and 5. Up next, we are going to RCC Boxing Promotions Intro 15 event in Russia for two fights. And the first is none other other than Kapoza's hand-picked KO of the week. This is a flyweight bout between Bekzad Uzmanov, sitting at a 7-4 record, and he's up against Jambul Askarov, who has a 3-0 record. This fight thought about going to the second round, but who says 10 seconds isn't long enough? <laughs> Yeah, a flying knee to the chin, and by the looks of it, I think Uzmanov was going for the right knee, but Askarov just dove headfirst into the left knee, and that is all she wrote. Oh yeah, and this uppercut to really seal the deal. Absolutely brutal knockout, and definitely deserves to be the KO of the week. Uzmanov secures this win, improves his record to 8-4, and four, and hopefully can land some more great KOs like this in his future. For our second fight at Intro 15, we have a well Welterweight matchup that has Roman Muhammad Sheen with a 9 and 3 record, and he's taking on Eduardo Hufinho, who has a 10 and 4 record. Unlike the last fight, this one actually does make it to the second round, and once it begins, well, it doesn't take long for this to happen. Yeah. For a second there, it looked like Roman might have had the win there after that big overhand right, but Eduardo had his own overhand right just waiting for the right moment, and man, did it put him into another universe. What a perfect display of keeping your composure and not letting up on your opponent as Eduardo secures this win and does it in great fashion and also improves his record to 11-4. and four. Moving on, we are going to the Ukraine Federation of Mixed Martial Arts event Golden Beach Cup in Ukraine for one fight. This is another welterweight matchup between Evgeny Karabet and Mikhail Ulyanov, both of which didn't have much information online that I could find, but I believe this is both of their pro debuts. And look, we make it to the start of round three, and this is one of my personal favorites because, I mean, ju just, just watch. What the hell? I didn't know I was watching a real-life Tekken game. Karabet just goes full beast mode with a left hook to a low kick to a suplex and then finishes it off with the ground and pound. Just a fantastic sequence from Karabet as he gets the stoppage from the ref and gains his first pro win. Now we're gonna swing over to Poland for the War 2 event for one fight and for sure the most unique fight this week. So you may remember two months ago we featured the War, which was a three-on-three -three style tournament in Poland. Well, it's back, but this time it's a three-on-three -three women's fight. So here we go. The first squad we have are the bad girls consisting of Agnieszka, Roxana, and Veronica. And their opponents, we have the Devils, Mugda, Agata, and Olivia. And once again, I couldn't find really anything on the individual fighters. So I will assume this is very early in all of their careers, but that does not prevent the chaos from ensuing. So the fight starts, and it's not long before the bad 
girls are down one and then it's just a brawl. And for some reason, a bad girl gets knocked down but is still in the fight and the scrap just continues. After a minute and 20 seconds, the refs finally call the fight and we have our winners, the Devils. Kaposa said that he does not recall ever seeing a three-on-three -three women's fight and my good friend Google also didn't say there's been one in the past. So this might just be history we are all watching as Poland hosting the first three-on-three -three women's MMA fight ever. Either way, this highlight was just crazy enough that we had to show you all that it in fact did happen. But congrats to the Devils on their group effort win on potentially the first three-on-three -three women's fight in history. Next up, we are going to Extreme FC Worldwide 88 in South Africa for one fight. Here, we have a flyweight fight between Julio Plightgees and Teboho Inteni, both of which are making their pro MMA debut. However, Julio has competed in the 2018 and 2019 IMAF Africa Championships, so he's definitely got some experience. And warning, this one actually is a little scary. I know we make jokes here about some scenarios and refs stoppages, but Julio gets the rear naked choke in just over a minute into the fight, and it lasts for almost 50 he's still, seconds. How is he still able to be Whoa, conscious? That's incredible. Oh my goodness. He's a, he's no, it looked like good. his out referee. Yeah. I've got to be honest with you. Surely. Surely he's out. Surely Referee needs to this. take a bit closer look Stopping and this fight. To, this has to be called. Surely. That's it. Referee is checking with his arm and That's saying he's it. awake, but really. It's done. He was out for quite Truly a scary situation because even Julio called him being asleep just 10 seconds in and the ref let it continue. And yes, Inteni moved a few times, but he was well gone by then. I couldn't find an update on Inteni, but we seriously hope he's okay after this situation and the Commission of South Africa has opened an investigation on this fight and they didn't state why, but we assume it has to do with the negligence and the referee. We still have a few more left, so now we're moving to Copa Team Force 4 in Paraguay for one fight. This is another one that I couldn't even find a page about either fighter, but we have Blas Insfran taking on Silencio Cabanas. And I don't speak Spanish, so I guess Magneto is Blas's nickname, and maybe Silencio is a nickname too. But either way, the action does not disappoint for this one, and we all know I love a good head kick, so check it out. CTF 4 por Gen. ¡Ven arriba! ¡No! ¡Hay que ir! ¡Hay que ir, señores! The only thing thrown in this third round, besides the glove touch, was this insane head kick from Bloss that put Cabanas down. And he was down for about four minutes, but we do know that he came to and left the cage on his own will. But a fantastic head kick KO to end this fight, and Bloss gains this win in just 15 seconds. Now we're gonna go to Ultimate Warrior Challenge 28 in Mexico for one fight. Here, we have a flyweight battle out between Brian Gonzalez, who's sitting at an 8-1 record, and he's taking on Brandon Uruchurtu, who has a 3-3 three three record. Another fight getting close to the end of round one, but that does not stop this from happening. Straight right, directly to that eye. Oh my wow. goodness! What a knockout by Brandon Uruchurtu! This fight is over! Yep, that's a fight ending right knee, followed by three hammer fists. Brandon times this knee perfectly as his opponent goes goes for a block, and that is all this fight takes. He secures this win very definitively and adds a win to his record, improving it to four and three. Still moving on, we are gonna end this week at Cage Fury Fighting Championships 99 with two fights. For our first, we have a welterweight co-main event between Nashon Burrell, who has a 17 and 11 record, and he's fought everywhere from Strike Force to Bellator and even the UFC years ago. And he's up against Haytag Plie, who has a 5-1-1 one, and one record. And if you recognize that name, that's because he was the fighter from four months ago that lost his finger mid-fight, and yeah, he's back now and fully recovered. So, towards the end of round one, we had an unexpected guest in the ring. Faded the Fitz Tunica Casino and Hotel. Fortunately, our referee has ushered the insect out of the fighting surface. Anyways, let's fast forward to round three, just 30 seconds in, and Pliev gets dropped. But, oh no, this fight isn't over. Pliev hangs on until 
damn, a, a second drop, but he's still fighting until this. He's got to be watching this. Pliev out on his feet. Oh, no, he's swinging back. Oh, the left hand drops him. And that's got to be it. Holy hell. Pliev survived being rocked three times, but unfortunately just couldn't stay in after the final blow from Burrell. Burrell gains this win and adds another win to his record, improving it to 18 and 11. For our last fight this week, we have the main event at CFFC 99, which is a featherweight fight between Jose Perez, sitting at a 4-0 record, and he's taking on DeAndre Anderson, who also has a 4-0 record. You know we had to end it on something quick and brutal, so check it out. Finishers, they are skilled, and you're oh! 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 Whoa! Anderson! Boom, baby! One hitter quitter via left hook and one right hook on the ground to secure the win. And what better way to celebrate than a good old dance after a fantastic knockout? What a performance by Anderson as he gets this knockout in just 13 seconds, securing the win and keeping his record clean now at 5 0. Thank you all again for joining us, and thank you immensely to Kaposa for finding all of these fantastic fights. If you want more clips just like these, seriously, go give him a follow on Twitter at Grabaka underscore Hitman, and you can also support him on his Patreon at patreon.com backslash Kaposa. And also, a huge shout out to these amazing organizations who host these fights, and to the fighters, winners, and losers, and we will see you all on the next video. Peace!